Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. Today I'm going to talk about something I get asked about a lot, and that is what pen tips I use in pyography. So I'm going to break the tips down into three categories, shaders, writers, and other. But before we get going, I want to mention that I use a Colwood Super Pro 2 and that all of my pen tips I currently use are manufactured by Colwood. Colwood offers three options for most of their pen tips. The options are using either a fixed or replaceable pen tip, polishing the pen tips, and bending the pen tips. So let's start with the replaceable or fixed tips. The handset on the left is a fixed tip model, the one on the right a replaceable tip model. The fixed tip handset has a pen tip permanently attached to it. This provides a more secure connection and that ensures a steady heat output. The downside is that they cost more and they are a bit bulkier to store. The replaceable handset does not come with pen tips. Those have to be purchased separately. To use, you just insert the pen tip you want into the handset. Both versions attach to the burner via a power cord that is plugged into the bottom of the handset. The big difference between the two is that you have to switch out the entire handset on the fixed tip system when you want to change pen tips. Which handset style is better? I can't tell you that. While I have one fixed tip handset, I haven't used it that much. When I did play around with it, I couldn't tell a difference between it and the replaceable tip. I personally use the replaceable tip system, mostly because I have a wooden holder that keeps all of the pen tips organized and nearby for easy use. Polished pen tips. One option you have with the pen tips is to have them professionally polished. The pen tip on the left is unpolished. You can see the metal ridges on the surface. Compare that with the polished tip on the right and notice how smooth that polished tip is. For this part of the demo, I am starting out with clean pen tips and the pin on the left is polished. When burning on wood, I notice that the polished tip glides over the surface easier, but is not super noticeable. Neither pin tip had any carbon buildup during this particular portion of the test. Where the polished tips really shine is when you are burning on leather. You can really feel the difference between the two. The polished tip glides effortlessly, whereas the unpolished tip tends to stick a little bit. Plus, the unpolished tip gets coated with carbon and turns black really fast. And when it's time to clean up the tips, the polished tip cleans much quicker, much easier. I don't think that polished pen tips are essential, but I do highly recommend them if you're going to burn on leather. Bent pen tips. The last option for pen tips is having them bent. This is the J shader, and it is normally straight. This pen tip is also a J shader but I bought it bent at a 45 degree angle. This is another J shader, and it is most likely the one you see in my videos. What I want to point out is that I bent the end of the tip. Compare it with how Colwood bent the left pin tip. I do not recommend doing what I did, as you can easily break the end of the pin tip off. If you choose to bend your own pen tips, which I don't recommend, but at least do it the same way that Colwood did. 
but be aware, if you bend your own pen tip, you will void the warranty on that pen tip. Shader Pen Tips Now let's talk about shader pen tips. The majority of my art is created with shaders. I tend to use a flat edge style of shader versus the spoon shader that has a concave or rounded surface to it. There are a couple of artists who use the ball pen tips for shaders and they get great results. I personally don't like to use the spoon or the ball pen tip for shading. I feel like I don't have as much control. I'm never 100% sure where exactly the line will be burned at or how close to the edge of an object I am. And I know a lot of that is just the lack of experience with the pen tip. Shaders can be used to create lines of various thicknesses, fill in areas with uniform color. They are also great for filling in areas with gradient shading. And of course, there are a wide range of textures that can be created, from rough and jagged mountains, to soft and fuzzy animal fur, and so many things in between. The possibilities are almost endless. All shaders can do the same basic things, so it's just a matter of picking one to use. A lot of that will be personal preference. Some people may only have one shader, and that's okay, it will work. Plus, it makes it very easy to decide which one to use. I have a number of shaders, and I pick my shader based on the size of the area that I will be working in. The shader I'm using right now is a touch too big. It almost fills up the entire area that I'm trying to stay in. So I switched to a smaller shader because it fits better and that made it easier to stay within the boundaries of the area I was burning. If I had to choose just one shader, I would pick the D shader because of the large range of burn widths you can create with it. A bonus shader would be the E spade shader because it is great for large open areas like backgrounds, but it has a point on it for doing fine or small detailed work. Writer Pen Tips Let's talk about writer pen tips. This is a micro writer pen tip. The main thing that I use it for is burning in trace lines. Now the inset photo shows two micro writer pen tips. The one on the right is the old version that Cole would use to make, and you will probably see it in some of my videos. I also use the micro writer to burn in areas that are just too small for any of the shaders, like the eye on this chipmunk or the reflection on this hubcap. I have also used the micro writer to create embedded or embossed lines in the wood. The burning in these lines looks a lot darker than it really is because I haven't erased the graphite. Also, you can see I'm using the old coal wood pen style, and I actually bent it while I was doing this because I was pressing so hard. When you burn over the area, the lines become visible. With this artwork, I kept the contrast to a minimum, so the embossed lines are a subtle accent. The standard C writer can be used on the short edge to burn thin lines, or turn it on the long edge and burn much thicker lines, and you could use the corner to burn dots. The standard writer can do all of the same things that the micro writer can. The advantage that the standard writer has is that it is larger than the micro writer. Because of that, it doesn't sink into the wood as easily, so it produces smoother burn results. That makes it useful 
for burning in small to medium-sized areas that might otherwise be difficult to use a shader in. These are Colwood's calligraphy pen tips, and so far I haven't found a use for them. But I will mention that there are artists who are using wire tip pens like this to create fur texture, so that might be worth checking into. As you can see, calligraphy is not my strong suit. Other pen tips. Now let's talk about the other pen tips I use. We will start with the ball pen tips. I bought the set of three ball tips that Colwood has, and I have found that I tend to only use the medium and the large one. The small ball tip produces the same size of dots as my micro writer. Now the ball tips are great for producing consistently sized dots. The dots can be made smaller or larger depending on how long you hold the pin tip to the wood. A quick tap produces a much smaller dot versus holding the pin tip in place for a fraction of a second. Because the ball tips are so smooth, a number of people like to use them as writers and shaders. I tend to use them for decorative accents on mandala artwork and as texture. One texture example is the nose on this lion. I like to apply a layer of dots over animal noses to give them that slight bumpy texture they have. Another example is the tongue on this baby. Tongues have a bumpy texture to them, so I apply a layer of tiny dots over the area to replicate that texture. The last pen tip I will talk about are what I call knife pen tips, mostly because they remind me of my X-Acto knife. I've also heard them referred to as skew tips. Regardless of what they are called, they all do the same basic thing. Burn really thin lines. Now they are awesome for burning thin straight lines, but I will be honest with you and admit that I very seldom use them. I don't have any video left from the projects when I have used a knife tip, so I created a quick demo. The most common thing I do with them is burn a series of light colored lines into the wood. When you burn over the lines with a shader, the pattern is revealed. I use this technique with mandala artwork and I've used the crosshatch pattern to mimic the texture of rough clothing. A decorative application of the technique is to use it to create starbursts in a night sky. To do this, burn a cross design and then burn a little X over the center. Burn as many as you want. Make sure to vary their placement and size. Also, make sure all of the stars are oriented the same way. It would look very odd if all of your stars are pointing up and down and you have one that's pointing at an angle. To reveal the stars, burn over them with a shader and this creates your night sky. There are two pen tips that I consider essential, a shader and a writer. I would recommend the D shader because of its versatility and the C writer for the same reason. A bonus pen tip would be a really large shader like the E shader and a medium or large ball pen tip. Well, that's it for this video. I hope I covered any questions you may have had on the subject. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have a blog that discusses the pen tips I use and I update it when I discover a new pen tip or a new way of using an existing one. So I will put a link to that article in the description below. 
Well, thank you for watching my video and I will see you next week.